Welcome to the Daily Dev Talk with me, Adrian Nanchev, where we explore and share experiences, stories and lessons seven days a week from across the games industry, helping you make the best game you can. Stay tuned for today's episode. Good morning, Overload Nation. Welcome to another episode of the Daily Dev Talk, talking to game developers from across the world to bring you experiences, stories and lessons seven days a week. Today, I'm joined with Pablo Sadade to talk about his first commercial game, Bleeding Border, from his own studio, Curse Box Studios. Pablo, talk about yourself first, please, and how you got into the games industry. Hi, nice, nice to be here. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? <laughs> how did you get into the games industry? All right. Well, I wanted to be in the game industry since a little boy. Uh, here the industry is underdeveloped, only a couple, uh, only a couple of companies. So I decided to make my own. Um, also, the industry here is more focused in mobile games. So this is the first uh, company about PC games. Mm, okay, cool. All right. So then, tell me about uh, your studio. How many people is it, and what's the structure? Well, Cursebox is a three-people studio. I found the studio with my girlfriend and my father-in-law, which were the only people <laughs> crazy enough to join me in make a game studio in Uruguay. Mm -hmm. I am the charter and concept artist and the 3D artist. My girlfriend is the 3D animator and my father-in-law is the programmer. I see. Oh, I see, quite convenient. Hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, um, tell me then about your latest, uh, well, your first game, even uh, a Bleeding Border, and what you want the player to experience. Well, this is a classic survival horror game, uh, more focused in the atmosphere and the mechanics. No much, more, no more much action like more games. Uh, you could say it's a little bit like Silent Hill or the first Resident Evil. Uh, the first thing that the player will notice is that you start with your arm cut off, uh, no no weapons, just you losing blood and trying to survive. Then later in the game you will find uh, a weapon for <laughs> like a screwdriver, and you use it to lose even more blood in order in order to kill the enemies. I don't want to spoil mm -hmm. too much of the game, but a couple of the, of the first levels will be a race to survival until you first manage to get to the last floor of the building. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so um, tell me then, how is it you went about promoting the game and what worked and what didn't work so well? Well, this, this was our first game. The, the first game we want to put in Steam. So it was all new to, to us. The strategy that best worked for us was using regional Latin American social networks like Taringa and developer communities. Also, we created a big community around the development of, development of the game in Facebook, Twitter, even DeviantArt, showing not only finishing the asset, but also very rough stuff. You know, screen captures of work in progress, nothing very finishes, trying to involve the people. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to, to have at least one Facebook post per day uh, Boston Facebook post also was very effective strategy. We spent like almost a hundred dollars in the Facebook campaign, not not much, uh, and that was the most effective strategy. Also, we spent a lot of time mailing different game journalists, mailing a lot of articles of the game, interviews also helped a lot. A lot. So what that was worked best for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, how is it you went about funding the game, and what worked and what didn't work so well? Well, we use our own time, time and money for the game in the beginning, but but after Kuzbox Studio became a legal company, we reached out for private initiatives uh, of the government and that helped uh, startups with funds and infrastructure, and that's how Bleeding Border was made. It's being made. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how is it you went about uh, getting feedback and uh, QAing the game? 
Um, well, we did a lot of focus group. Uh, I even used my university. A lot of people there uh, was very cool and, and let us use the, the events there to test the game. A lot of people uh, came from that. Also, I mailed it to a lot of my game colleagues, also professors, and we even made a, a pre-sale recently that gave us a lot of feedback of the game. So we are still working on the game, trying to fix the bug, uh, making the experience better. Mm -hmm. Cool, very industrious. <laughs> so what, what, uh, what was removed and cut from the game and why? Well, the game was supposed to be, the, the game that we will present in Steam was supposed to be only the introduction of a bigger game with a more complex story. But we decided that, that was too much for our first project, so we cut, cut it in three parts. And the first part is Bleeding Border. We hope to, to get to the second and third part. Um, but we wanted to present uh, the blood mechanic that was the innovation of the game and dedicate the whole game to that. If this game sales, sales good, we will certainly make a next chapter. It's all in the mm -hmm. hands of the fans now. Okay, okay. So then, what was the biggest thing you learned while working on the game? Well, that planning and pre-production is the most important thing in game development. We all want to rush into production, but thinking well always save you a lot of work. And that's a lesson that us developers are constantly being reminded of. Uh, always having your priorities straight. You will want to make the art of the game or whatever you like more, but we need to think about the priorities. That's something we will rem remember better in the next project that in this moment is in a pre-production phase and will be a lot of time in pre-production. So we mm. make sure don't commit the same mistake again. It's cool, always learn from your mistakes. So, uh, well, what was the um, what was the worst thing that happened and how did you overcome it? Well, the worst thing that happened was changing the, the ancient version. We changed the from, from Unity 4 to Unity 5, and that changed a lot of basic stuff. And um, from one day to another, the game was buggy without apparent reason. A lot of plugins that we had bought stopped working. So what, that was a real problem. We spent some time in getting everything to work again, but it was a necessary change. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what was the best game dev purchase you made, whether it was a software license or a hardware or top quality equipment, or simply a comfortable chair, good desk, and a second monitor? Well, we bought a new computer for the programmer because he, the computer that he had didn't even have a graphic card. So he wanted to, to run the game to, to test it, and he couldn't. So we, we, you, we bought a new computer for him and keep using the old computer to test if the game worked in other computers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so new computers for the programmer. Yes. That's quite important, quite important. So uh, what game development-related book, lecture, or learning resource can you recommend? Uh, well, for me, it's marketing for the video games, part one and two. Um, we always want to, to learn more about art, uh, about uh, game design, and there is a lot of book about that. Well, marketing is, in my opinion, one of the most uh, relegated areas for us developers. And it's obvious why it's boring. We want to make games, but we never think about advertising them, about the great, uh, and it's a great failure of, of us as business people. If you don't want to see the game industry flood with cold corporates, like, then you need to take responsibility and do the dirty work of promotion and advertisement. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the book again? Uh, marketing for video games, part one and two. I don't what? remember the author. What, what was that? Marketing for what? For video games. Oh, video games. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. That's, that sounds very useful. I, I hear that a lot of people tend to neglect or don't know what to do about marketing and to have, have a definitive book or learning resource talking about that is very useful, very powerful. Yeah, exactly. So, like an Evernote or a Trello, 
Do you have a useful or productivity enhancing software app or website worth sharing? Um, we use Trello and I say, uh, I, I use Trello because my teammates never see the, the, their boards. It's more effective just to shell at them what they have to do next. We are only three people after all. And it's, it's better just tell them what to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, so Pablo, Pablo, mm -hmm. what advice can you give to aspiring game developers, small indie studios, and people trying to get to where you are today? Well, first, to don't get intimidated by the size of the industry. Uh, many of us think that if we live in a place like Uruguay, for example, or if you don't have a lot of money, you can uh, make video games. That's not true. The, the size of your wallet or the size of the team doesn't matter. What matters is the passion for making video games. So just make video games and start learning from your mistakes. And maybe one day you will be successful in the industry. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, cool. It's persistence. Persistence is very important. Yeah, exactly. And why is it you think that the location doesn't really make much difference? Like you mentioned, uh, your country. Is that because is that because it's all predominantly online, or or how exactly? No, more about the infrastructure or the the people. There's no many people uh, with abilities in 3D software, for example. And there is not much company, video game companies. So maybe that people. in a country. You need to create it after all. Okay. So, Pablo, what is next for you? And what's the best way to contact you? Hello, Pablo, are you there? Um, what's next next to me? Where no, no. We are the finishing bleeding border. Yes. Hi. I repeat, please. What is next for you? And uh, what's the best way to contact you? Well, the best way to contact me is through... Uh, the Crossbox Studio page that is crossboxstudio.com and um, we will be finishing the Bleeding Border so that's mm -hmm. next for me <laughs> and we're starting to making the second game that, like I told Ah <laughs> uh, yes, you mentioned that briefly which is uh, pretty cool and exciting a lot of people like horror games, no doubt or no doubt so, Pablo, it appears we're out of time for this episode of the Daily Dev Talk. It was great talking to you. Same here. Some, it was some good things worthwhile considering, like the marketing, that book, Marketing for Video Games, sounds very important. And the planning and preparation was the biggest thing you learned, and I think a lot of people can appreciate that and really have to nail that down. And persistence as well, keeping at the game and not giving up. Yes. A, I wish you well on future endeavours. Thanks a lot. So, stay tuned, Overload Nation, and more videos to come. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Daily Dev Talk with me, Adrian Nanchev. If you are a game developer that wants to get your name and game out there and to share your experiences and stories, or you have feedback or opinions of the show, then contact me at info at gameoverload.co.uk. That's info at gameoverload.co.uk. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode, more to come.